If you've ever dialogued with Jehovah's Witnesses, Muslims, or Unitarians, you might have heard this verse used to dispute the deity of Christ. The idea being, Jesus said the Father is greater than him, therefore Jesus isn't God. Is that what this scripture is telling us? Well, let's read. John 14, 28. Keeping in mind, always to read the verses before and after. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor fearful. You heard that I said to you, I am going away, I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. Is this a statement refuting Christ's deity? Depends how you interpret greater. That is the focus, after all. Does greater imply inferiority to the lesser? Firstly, let's look at the word greater, or mesion in the Greek. Where else is this used? It's in the same conversation, John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I am going to the Father. Greater works than these. What does greater mean here? Indeed, in quantity, or the big picture? How about greater indeed? Well, are we raising the dead? No. Dying for the sins of man? No. So, quantity? Well, probably not. John twenty-one twenty-five said Jesus did so much it would fill a library. So if it can't be deed or quantity, then it's the big picture. Jesus is healing people physically, curing blindness, but the church was bringing the gospel of salvation to the ends of the earth. Does that make what Christ did inferior and not the most important part of human history? No. Therefore, greater in the same dialogue with his disciples isn't speaking of inferiority. Let's look at previous verses, as the Bible is meant to be read as a whole. And don't forget, this is John 14, which means other events happened before this moment, which helps in the context. Jesus is referring to something he said previously, right here. So where is this from? Well, for starters, John 7, 33. Therefore, Jesus said, for a little while longer, I'm going to be with you, and then I'm going to him who sent me. You will seek me and will not find me. And where I'm going, you cannot come. Here's where Jesus identifies something unique about himself. This isn't just a statement of, I'm going to heaven, but a fulfillment of prophecy from Daniel 7. Jesus goes to be with the Father, goes up to God, and sits at the right hand, which undoubtedly is a greater position than the one he has now. Now let's look at another statement, just one chapter ahead. John 8, 21. Then he said again to them, I am going away and you will look for me, and will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews were saying, surely he will not kill himself. Will he? Since he says, where I am going, you cannot come. And he was saying to them, you are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Here's another statement. I'm going above, to a better, and dare I say, greater place than this dirt hole. I'm not from here, but from where God is, which is a greater place. Lastly, let's see how this conversation begins in John 14 at John 14, 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you, because I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I am coming again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you will also be, and you know the way where I am going. I'm going to prepare a place for you that is in heaven with God, then I'm going to come get you and bring you there. Wow, that sounds a lot like I'm going away and I'm coming to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I'm going to the Father. Obviously, Jesus is referring to something he just said. The Father here is greater than all this. I am flesh now, but I am taking you into glory. Why are you holding on to this world when I go to prepare a place for you? Get it? This has nothing to do with Christ's nature. John 14, 28 isn't a statement on Christ's lack of deity. It's a reminder of why he came, to be a servant, that he stepped down out of heaven and into our world to be our Lord and sacrifice for the sins of mankind.
Rejoice, for I go to the Father, to sit at the right hand of glory, to be your judge who says, Come into the kingdom prepared for you, good and faithful servant, because I defeated death for all mankind on the cross. If you don't agree, fine. Let's just say this statement is about his nature. Even if that's the case, you'd be ignoring Hebrews 2 and Philippians 2, which clearly teaches Christ humbled himself, took a position lower than the angels, and became flesh. The Father, even in that context, would be greater, but doesn't remove the deity of Christ. So no matter how you view this text in light of the entirety of the Bible, it doesn't teach that Jesus isn't God. It should be read as a sign of hope of what's to come because of Christ's finished work. Anyone using this as a proof text to make Jesus less than God is using the Bible dishonestly.